Hi everyone, David here from FastGen with another step-by-step -step tutorial. Today we're gonna build a little bit of backend logic where we create an API and connect it with a Stripe webhook, which is triggered whenever a new customer fills in their payment information. And what we want to do whenever that happens is that we play a little bit with SQL and the database query action. And we are gonna send each customer an individual invitation code that we take out of the database and then mark that code as used to make sure that we don't send it a second time. Okay, let's go straight into it. We're gonna start by creating a post endpoint and we're gonna call this one new customer. We're also gonna change the URL path to new customer. For auth, we're just gonna turn it into a public route for now. Gonna put a success message at the end, very basic one um, for the time being. I'm gonna call it success is true. And then we're gonna deploy the endpoint and it's now live under this domain, under this URL. Now we have to navigate to Stripe to set up the actual webhook. Stripe has two environments, a live environment and a test mode. We're in the test mode right now. Um, you have to go to test mode and then developers and then to webhooks to create them. I'm going to add an endpoint here and the specific Stripe event that we are interested in in this example is session um, completed. Yeah, check out session completed. This one right here. If you're building this with me or a slightly different version, you can add other events, change this to whatever you want to listen to in your case. Okay, now we're gonna copy this URL to the clipboard and paste it right here. So Stripe knows what to call whenever this is happening. Okay, I also created an example fast shell product in our test mode, you can do that here under products. Um, did that before the video to save us some time. And right here is a mock checkout uh, that we are quickly gonna fill out to test if the actual webhook is working with the FastGen API. So you can always use some mock credit card information that I'm doing right here. I'm gonna call it test, David test. I'm gonna do a example address right here. And then we're good to go. Just saw that this is in German, so please excuse that. Okay, all right, so the test checkout has been completed, so now we can go back to FastGen and go into our logs, and we can see that the API has been called, and we also received some data, and uh, everything went through. So let's go check it out and view it in the builder. You can close this tab. So this is the API endpoint that we just built, uh, two minutes ago and here we can have a closer look at the body content that we received from Stripe. We can either inspect it here, we can also go to the action log to see a full history of everything. In this specific case the inputs.body is everything that we can look at so it's uh, the same. We are mainly interested in two data points. This is the name and the email because we want to notify ourselves which customer has signed up and we want to reach out to the customer to send them their individual invite code. So we're gonna look at inputs.body and then we are trying to find this right here, email and name. This is what I just entered when I filled out the payment form. So what we're looking at is inputs.body.data.object and then we scroll down to dot customer details and then it's dot email and dot name. So we can remember that for now, um, I'm gonna exit the debug mode and we're gonna do two things. On one hand, I'm gonna add a little Slack message. Yeah, we're just gonna call that ping. And we have a channel called user sign up and we say, hi, hi team, a new user signed up, their name is, and then we use the dropdown and we use inputs.body and now we use what we just saw in the payload and we use inputs.body and then dot data dot object dot customer underscore details dot name and we're just gonna copy this to use it for the email and their email is write this and I'm gonna change name to email okay 
So now we have an internal ping set up. The second thing that I want to do is that I create an event. We want to do two more things to complete this backend logic. On one hand, we want to generate an invitation code and in a second step, send it to the customer and market it's used. Theoretically, I could do both of these things, the database query and the email SMTP action in this same API call. But for the sake of illustrating how events work and on getting used to modulizing my workflows and APIs, I want to show you how you do it. So we're going to say whenever a new customer fills out their payment information, this API is called and we are pinged that we are creating an event. Yeah? And we call this new event new customer and we also say the unique event name and this is important, it's also new customer. This name up here doesn't matter that much. This one is the important one. We also want to store the two data points of name and email in this event. So when we start building the event-based workflow with the database query and the email, we can access these two parameters that we are saving right here. And we are gonna call them name. Just gonna copy paste, oops. Um, it's going to copy paste what we still have in the clipboard from the Slack message, which is the inputs.body.data.lalala.name. I'm going to do comma. And we also want to store the email, which we are also going to call email. So here, I just changed that to email. All right. Save. Deploy. Okay. Good to go. Now, we hop to workflows and we add a workflow, an event-based one. Yeah? And we can give this a name, let's call this send invite code to customer. And the event that triggers this workflow, and this is important, we're going to say new customer. Okay, I'm going to quickly deploy it so we don't lose this top action. But um, I just want to show it again. Event that triggers this flow is new customer. And this is also the name of the unique event name. So it knows when it should trigger. Okay. Let's go back. What we want to do now is, is that we take out invitation codes from a database table. So before we continue building out this workflow, I'm going to go to databases. Quickly going to delete this. Okay, let's create a, a new table and we're going to call it invite codes. Yeah? And I'm interested to have two columns in this one. Uh, I want to have the invite codes themselves, we're going to call that code. And let's say it has to be at least three, digit, th three digits. And I'm interested in the fact if the code has already been used or not. So I'm going to add a Boolean type, which I'm going to call used. I also want to add that the codes have to be unique and they're required. So every row has to have a code. All right, now I could either bulk upload some real codes that I want to use for this example. We're just going to type in a couple of codes um, right here. Okay. Okay. So all of these codes are now unused and we want to write some SQL that whenever a new customer signed up, they're going to be sent one of these invitation codes. And after that, they are marked as used, but I don't want to do that manually, but we can write some SQL that does that job for us. Okay, so we are back in the event-based workflow. What we're going to add is a database query action. Yeah? And I'm going to call this gen random invite code. And let's configure the query. In here, we're now going to write some SQL. Um, let's start with update invite codes. That is the table that we just created. And what we want to do is that we set used to true. This is the change that we want to make every time a code is sent out. And now we have to specify a condition on uh, where and at, uh, for what formula we want to do that. So we're going to say code equals select code from invite codes where used is not true yeah, because we only want to select codes uh, that haven't been marked as used yet. yeah. 
and we want to order that by random because we want random codes to be picked out of the table. And we want to limit this by one. Yeah, we only want one code each. And after that, at the end, we're gonna say returning code. Yeah, because this SQL statement ultimately has to return something that we want to then use in actions following that SQL statement. Okay, now we're gonna save. And now we're at the last step already, yeah? We add an email SMTP action block. I already connected my email account in the settings. Uh, if you haven't done that, you need to do the same. I'm gonna say send invite code. So let's uh, declare the recipient. What we did, if you remember, when we created the event, yeah, I'm gonna go back to the APL real quick. When we created the event, we saved two data points in here, the email and the name yeah, as parameters. So if we go back to the workflow, we can now, since this event is triggering this, new customers triggering this, we can access all of the parameters that we sent, uh, that we saved, excuse me, in the create event action block in the API. So send invite code, have to give it a name again. And now we can use the dropdown and we can use inputs.param. And we're gonna use inputs.param.email because that is gonna be the recipient of that email. Also want to edit the content. I'm gonna say, okay, this email comes from me and the subject is welcome to the platform. Okay. Now I'm gonna uh, do a little bit of HTML where I say hi, and we can call the customer by its first name, again, by inputs.param.name in this instance. Yeah, So we say hi, thank you for signing up. Thank you for signing up. Please visit, let's just say, fastgen.com and use your in individual invite code. And now we're gonna use the output of the database query and we're gonna say steps gen random invite code dot outputs. And we have to add two things because we want to have the result. I'm gonna add a zero and code. So now we are accessing the output of the database query that is above this SMTP action. Here's the internet code, okay. And now we're gonna say, um, have fun. Let us know if you have questions. Okay. Now we're gonna close this HTML, save it, save this and deploy it. Okay, now we're good to go. Let's do a test through another Stripe test to see if A, we receive the internal ping, if the email gets the, if the customer gets the email, and if the invitation code is marked as used. Okay, so gonna do this for now. Example, payment information, I'm gonna say this, zero, 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 David Nordhausen, and example address again, right here. Oh. I'm not sure what happened here. Let me do it again. I'm not sure what went wrong. Maybe I submitted already. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Mm, okay. Zero, zero, zero. David Nordhausen and some example. Okay, let's go. All right, okay. This time it looked like it worked. Let's go and see if everything worked as expected and as planned. So on one hand in the logs, we can see again that we just received the information from Stripe. If we scroll down a little bit here, we should find email and name. That is what I just entered. So this is great. So we've received the information. Let's go to Slack. We can see here that hi team, new users signed up, their name is David and their email is this. So the internal ping worked as well. 
Let's go check out if the database change also worked by invite codes. And it did, it looked like it picked a random code and marked it as used. We should also see that in the logs for workflows. If we click here, send invite code to customer, we have a su successful run through um, where we once again see the parameters. This is what I entered. This is what's received by the API and then passed through the event-based workflow by the event action block. And I can also see the actions down here, yeah, where the data, the SQL selected this code and marked it as used. I'm gonna show this again. And now, last but not least, let's see if I also received the email. Right here it is. Okay, and it says, hey David, thank you for signing up. Please visit blah, 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 and use your individual invite code of three to run. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so everything worked out. I hope that this was insightful. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, would love to chat with you on the community discord. If you have questions for me personally, just shoot me an email, david at fastgen.com. And I hope that you have a good rest of your day, wherever you're at, and um, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.